Good afternoon crafters, we are live. My name is Hannah Roxbury and I'm the brand ambassador for Carnation Crafts and this afternoon we are bringing you a Facebook Live dedicated to the Glow of Christmas and the additional die sets featured on the Glow of Christmas launch. So yes, it is June, <laughs> yes it is boiling hot outside and yes we are in a full force Christmas but we know um, you guys at home, you want to get ahead on your crafting, you want to get all of your Christmas cards started and done in advance, hence why ourselves and Create and Craft bring you Christmas in June. As we always do, uh, we're going to give it a little while just so everyone who wants to join us live can find us and do so. Lots of people tuning in already. Hello to everyone. We've got Joyce, we've got Judy, we've got Trees here and Dawn and Mandy. Pauline's here, Carol's here as well, <laughs> and Susan too. So if you do have any questions or queries as we go through the Facebook Live, this afternoon is all about you guys. Type up your comments and I will do my very best to try and answer as many questions as we go. And actually, this afternoon is going to be a little bit of fun because we're going to do a double bill. So we're going to make two cards in this Facebook Live demonstration. One with the Christmas wreath and the Glow of Christmas um, combined, if you like. And then we'll do a second demonstration featuring the wreath maker and the tiny lights as well, because I know we've had a lot of questions on those. So sit back, relax, let me know if you were crafting along with me as well. Um, a couple of people saying, uh, Suzanne here, hi Hannah, all my dyes have come Thanks to all at Carnation Crafts. Ah, oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, the warehouse team, a huge, huge shout out to them over at uh, Carnation Crafts HQ. They are so dedicated. They work so, so hard because they know you guys want to be crafting with your with your dies as soon as you can. So they do get them out very, very quickly for you. Uh, Carol says, afternoon, Hannah. Received my wreath maker yesterday, just waiting to have time to play. Dawn says, mine arrived yesterday, play, 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 fantastic. And do you know what? It's lovely to see. We've got um, obviously our Facebook group as well, Carnation Crafters, where a lot of you guys share your tips and inspiration. But what you also do, and you do so wonderfully, is share all of your card makes as well. And it's lovely to see those Christmas cards you've been creating with the Glow of Christmas collection already popping up in there as well. Uh, just checking, I'm not missing any questions so far. Uh, no, not, not yet, by the looks of it. <laughs> Tanya says, hello, my lovely, just a hi and bye as I'm at work, off to work. Uh, so can't watch, wait to watch later. Got the main bundle and the wreath card shape today. Fantastic, Tanya. Well, I hope you have a lovely afternoon at work. And as Tanya mentioned, uh, she's going to watch back later. We do upload all of the Facebook uh, Live, both the show previews we do before a launch and also the... Um, Oh goodness me, baby brain. Come on, what is the word? Live demonstrations. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're literally not even five minutes in and I can't remember my words. Um, we will upload them to our Facebook page afterwards. So they're always there for you guys to watch back at your leisure and craft along should you wish. Um, blah, 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 blah. Let's just see. Ah, oh, Janine, Lee DT is here. She says, hi, gorgeous. I'm here with you, sweetie. Oh, it's nice to have your company. Thank you. I did, yeah, I did put a little, little plea for people to come and join me and keep me company this afternoon. So it's lovely to have so many people. Uh, Alison says, yo, smiley face. Hi, Hannah. This is such a treat. Stunning dyes. The next collection looks super cute. Thanks for all you do. Alison, you're more than welcome. And yes, just a little note. Uh, Alison mentioned the next collection, which is Around the Tree. That launches on Monday on Create and Craft at 8.15 in the morning with Miss Bagshaw, our Carla. But... But we do have a very exciting giveaway just launched over on our brand page, uh, Carnation Crafts, where you could have to like, share and comment and even tag a friend if you wish to. And you could be in a chance with winning the full Around the Tree die collection, including the additional die sets as well. So um, head on over to that post, just find that post, uh, add your comments, like it and share it. And you could be in a chance with winning that fantastic giveaway. Um, but, but, um, Alison says, hi everyone, dies due today and looking forward to playing at the weekend. Fantastic. Uh, Valerie says, my dies are here and thank you for the extra colourways. I know, Valerie, those extra colourways are just sublime. If you're not sure what we're talking about, with both the Glow of Christmas and the upcoming collection around the tree, if you are a customer who has ordered the full collection, so all of the dies within the Glow of Christmas or all of the dies as the combined collection for around the tree, you will receive within your parcel a little leaflet that contains instructions and a code allowing you access to the full additional colourway. So you've got a whole 
host of colours to be crafting with all through the Christmas season. Um, just have a little hunt through your parcel because it will be in with your paperwork rather than in with the die. So just check that one through. Um, Tracy says, hi Hannah, making Christmas cards and watching you. Oh, fantastic. It's nice to hear some of you are making along as well. Diane is here. Hi Hannah, made it back. Bless you, Diane. I was thinking of you this morning, actually. Um, she says, how is lovely Morph? Well, Morph has only just left, so he's gone for his afternoon nap. And I am trying to persuade him to come back so and make a little featurette on this Facebook Live, but I'm not having much luck, which is hilarious. Um, bless him. But if he does if he does make an appearance, he will say a hello to you, Diane, and everyone who's watching as well. <laughs> uh, Wendy says, you, Hannah, I like this. I like all these original ways of saying hello. I think it's rather fabulous. Um, looking forward to seeing the new collection, even after by a little bit with the last one, which I've already received. Thank you, Wendy. Um, Jeanette says, hi, Hannah, just coming in for a little something to eat. Been busy cutting out my Carnation Crafts diets, which arrived this morning. Didn't realise you were on. Excellent, you're going down with a cup. Well, with a cuppa. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, no, a nice cup of tea. I've got a, I've got a glass of juice next to me to, to keep me going through the Facebook Live. Uh, Kim says, hi, everyone from a warm and sunny France. Oh, how lovely to know we've gone international. So without further ado, ado honestly, Hannah, get your words in place. What is wrong with me? <laughs> Sorry to everyone who is still bearing with me. Honestly, it will be one of those Facebook Lives by the sounds of it. Should we get into the demonstration? Should we just get down to what we're supposed to be doing today instead of me trying to talk nonsense as I, as I usually do? Let's turn this camera around. And here we have our little work area. So the first demonstration, remember this is a double bill, so we will be working with a couple of cards here. We're gonna be working with the Christmas wreath card shape in all its glory. This is a fantastic die set. But just flip it over so you can see the front and all the detailing. You've got this lovely, large, luxurious bow to the bottom, and of course, all of this extended filigree to the top. Now, what's really exciting about the wreath card shape is, it includes a little hanger and of course additional little filigrees as well because we don't leave you with any excess space within the die. We do fill everything to the max. You've also got all of your mats and layers and your aperture dies as well. So what that means is you can be crafting and creating absolutely stunning wreaths that will hang should you wish them to. For this demonstration, we're gonna be making it into a easel card. And for anyone wondering, the size, it's a lovely, lovely big size die. And bear in mind, you would need to pop this through your A4 um, cutting plates minimum. Uh, this is just over eight inches at its widest point, okay? So as we say, nice large side card in its own right. So what we're gonna do to create our card base is we're gonna take this outermost die. Now you've seen me do this pretty much on every single demonstration we do. Outermost die, creating card base. We're gonna cut it twice, once for the back of the card, once for the front from construction weight cards. So we're talking about 350 GSM, perfect smooth. It's a nice heavy base for your card stock to begin layering and designing your cards onto, okay? Just checking back through the comments. Uh, Dawn says, I didn't get a code with my set. What shall I do? That's really super easy for us to sort out, Dawn. If you message our customer service team, our dedicated customer service team, it's customer services at carnationcrafts.co.uk. You have to include a screenshot of your order from Create and Craft. But if you do that, just explain you didn't receive your code or you've misplaced it. As long as you've got that order to, to prove so we can verify it, we can release and send you the um, code on there as well. Um, let's have a look. Karen says, Hannah, love all the different colourways free with the glow of Christmas. I received my collection with the code for the free vignettes yesterday. Just printing some off as I watch you. I must say you're looking very well. Hope you're not too hot today. Very hot and muggy here in Clacton on Sea in Essex. Hi to all the Carnation crafters watching. Yeah, thank you. That's really kind. It's um yeah, I do I do surprisingly for the first time in about um eight months or so feel <laughs> feel well, which is never a good sign, is it, when it comes to babies? because uh, it often means they're on their way. But um yeah, I have to I have to admit it is very hot and sticky at the moment. But we can't complain because it has been a really rainy year, so it's nice to have the sunshine now. So the easel card, as we've said, we've cut that first layer once for the back of the card, 
once for the front. Okay, remember this is 350 GSM. Onto this, before I start building the layers, I'm gonna add in what we call our mats and layers. These are our framing devices. Again, you will find them within your parcel of dies. And we're working down it in size order. So they're your framing devices, your mats and layers are the smaller dies, one and two, that we can cut from either the perfect papers, which I have done in the gold tone here. The perfect papers are an accompanying cardstock pack launched alongside every collection, colour match to work in with your vignettes. And I've also snuck in this because I think this has to be my favourite backing paper of all time. It's glorious it actually looks like it's sparkling it's one of the free backing paper downloads available for glow of christmas um, that you can download directly today from carnationcrafts.co.uk just search on free downloads followed by glow of christmas and you'll find all the backing papers in there like i always do i will pop a little link up so you can find all of these afterwards so I'm going to use some finger lift tape. I don't know why I haven't got finger lift tape on the back of this already. I was probably just excited to get to the demonstration actually. So finger lift tape, it's a nice tape. As you can see, we can instantly rip it. We don't have to worry about scissors or getting our scissors all gluey or anything like that. But it just means it gives you a nice flat adhesion between your layers. What's also super handy with finger lift tape is you'll notice it's easy to remove the carrier sheet. So this backing paper that we have on the, the sticky itself, because both top and bottom, the tape doesn't extend all the way to the edge of the carrier sheet, just making it super easy to use. So whenever we're sticking in place, we just flatten off our tape like so. I use the back of my nail, but you could use something like a bone folder or something to make sure it's stuck to the card. It just makes that carrier tape uh, sheet a little bit easier to lift. And we're going to align. So we've got these two little nodules, if you like, either side of the die set, which makes lining up the die cuts really, really super easy. And you get a nice even edge of white all the way around the outside of your card. Now we fold it over just a section of that carrier sheet. We're going to hold in place and pull before we flatten down. That way you've still got a little bit of um, slip inside, if you like, as Carla puts it, to manoeuvre the die cut into place before you go in and remove the rest of the carrier sheets. It means you get a nice, even stick and everything's aligned properly because there's nothing better than a nice alignment on your front of your card to make it look nice and professional when you're finished, okay? So that's the base of our easel constructed. We then have this piece. So remember we've cut this one from our largest size and you'll notice what we've done here is scored along the top as a little flap okay and then we've scored along the bottom sorry the middle of the card as well. We line that up with the card underneath and we're going to fold that flap back and you'll see we have a red liner tape on that fold. Now this is going to create our card base and the reason we're using uh, red liner tape in this instead of finger lift is because it's a nice secure, it's more of like a construction tape. It's a nice sticky, sticky, sticky tape. So if you're doing things like folding your card fronts and things like that, it's excellent to make your cards from. So I'll just use my pokey tool to remove that carrier sheet from the red liner tape. And then we're gonna smooth that down, okay? That's gonna create your front and the back of the card. So if you wanted to have this as a standing card, for example, you could have it as a tent fold, like so. Um, and obviously, if you wanted to make sure it stays um, upright rather than rocking to side to side, you could trim a little bit off the back, just so you've got a flat area. Or you could design it as a rocker, because those are always a fun kind of card to have on your mantelpiece as well. So a little rocker card where it sort of rocks back and forth with your design on the front as well. So you've got options with your wreath card shape. To the top, we want to create that pop-up effect that we see and we are familiar with when it comes to easel cards. So we have cut another layer from the outermost die set, the largest die within the pack. And we're sticking that down to the top of our easel, just aligning it all again, 350 GSM, perfect smooth. And you'll see I've only got the red liner tape on the bottom half of that score along the middle, okay? That means when we go in and just peel away 
like so, just as you see me do before, and then smooth that into place, okay? It means the pop-up mechanism for the easel is gonna work perfectly. By sticking just one before we go in and remove the rest, it just makes things easier. It means we can go in sort of hands-free, not having to worry that we're gonna misalign anything. It just means everything then works beautifully together, okay? So now, when we open our card, you get that glorious pop-up easel effect, which gives you such a dramatic card shape to sit on someone's mantelpiece. Do you know what, actually, forget the mantelpiece. This is gonna be one of your coffee table cards. This is gonna be one of your special cards that you get out every Christmas, just decorate the house with, you know the ones, <laughs> the ones that we keep special as decorations rather than just as cards as well. <laughs> A couple of people asking if Morphe's been at my skin. Yeah, Morphe, Morphe does like to, but actually, um, no, those ones, I um, those little cuts on my hands and things, apologies for those if, if it's uh, off-putting for anyone. I, um, I've been out in the garden moving some things around, so that's that's from, from gardening, actually, rather than Morphe putting up a fight about being brushed or anything. To the top of our card, we're going to go in with those same mats and layers, okay? So remember, anything we do when it comes to an easel, it's really nice to give you that theme and that, that sense of repetition through the card as well. So once again, we've got our gold from the Perfect Papers, part of the cardstock pack for Glow of Christmas, and then that glorious backing paper featuring those like sparkling snowflakes in that kind of twilight sky. I just love the colours of it. I think it's so on trend, so modern, but really lovely against the bright colours that you can see in front of me for the vignettes, uh, the artwork for the die cuts as well. So there's our base constructed. So we've got the same on the inside as what we have the outside, this kind of twinkling starry night, fresh snowfall for a Christmas Eve, for example. Onto this, we want to start building our story, which is all about Christmas. It's all about presents. It's all about Father Christmas. It's all about warm wishes. It's just wonderful. And to do this, we're going to layer a few die sets. So we're going to bring in one of the circular die sets, one of the frames from the Glow of Christmas. And this one is called The Joy of Giving. And it features your wonderful lush presents with all their beautiful filigree around them, the glittering beads you decorate your tree with, the little striped ball balls, just so lovely. And the sense of flow and movement within that particular die set is exquisite. That's going to feature as the front of our card. But it's going to be nestled in to filigree from the beautiful wreath card itself. So layering up your die cuts really gives this opulent effect, it gives this opulent look, but you've got all of that detailing that just really does work beautifully. You've got the filigree from the presence behind, and then overlay, you've got this wonderful filigree from the wreath card shape as well, and that bow is just spectacular. So we're just trying out for size, how everything's gonna fit, the positioning and things like that, and I'm quite happy with placement. Once I have found where everything is going to go, we're going to start adding into our story. So I'm quite happy with the placement of the present there. But I think I'd like to bring in a little bit of perspective. I'd like to break that background up just a tad. And I'm going to sneak in just a little bit more colour from the Christmas tree, from the setting scene die set again. If you did just go for the um, winter frame collection, you'll get that within it as well. It's all little uh, little bits of mistletoe, a window, um, all, all sorts of little bits and bobs that you can add to tell your story for your scene. And that just nestles in so beautifully behind the presence as well. It looks like it's all meant to go together. And that really is the, the joy of Carnation because it's all designed in house by our talented um, head of design, Nick and his team from initial conception of the idea right through to building on those designs, having the dies made, then the artwork, it gives you this signature, it gives you this particular look for Carnation. Now I'm just unblocking my glue nozzle there, so just with a pokey tool, and then we're going to go in. So I'm using a book binding glue on this one uh, from Pim Flair, just because I want a nice quick adhesion between surfaces and also just then the ability to stick flat rather than raised at all. And that is gonna sit centrally to my design. I'm not gonna smooth it into place. I'm not gonna like push it down and, and smooth it into place because I want to slip in the tree behind as well. So when it comes to layering and things, it is always a great idea just to 
test and try before you commit to sticking everything down. And doing it that way means you've, you've got options then of where everything sits, like so. Okay, so we're overlapping, overlaying that tree, making sure that's nice and straight with everything going on. Just twisting and turning that so I'm looking at it straight and then making sure that tree is nice and straight as well. And then once we're happy with placement, we can stick. Obviously, we can do a little final check just with the filigree as well, but that's sitting really beautifully. And this ends up looking so, so opulent. I think because you've got all that wonderful gold and the rich reds and the beautiful highlights from all the sparkles, it just works so beautifully together. Um, Lorraine says, I'm so looking forward to receiving my wreath card die set. I live on the Isle of Wight, so my post is a little bit slower than on the mainland. Oh, you're going to have such fun making with this one. Do let me know in the comments as well what you intend to make. You know, who are you going to be giving these Christmas cards to this year when you've made them? Perhaps you've got last year's collections, either Christmas time or Christmas Eve, and you're going to be mixing and matching these with that collection as well. I mean, I think it's going to look fantastic. So our next layer we're placing down is that beautiful filigree and that wonderful bow again we're using flat glue on this one white glue on this just easing that into place again i haven't gone mad with the glue it's just in little areas whenever nick designs he always designs little areas where you can pop your glue so nothing shows from the front and i think this is going to look so so pretty once we've built the whole design so that's coming together beautifully uh, Cindy says, I'm so in love with this die set. I hope delivery to the US is fast. Can't wait to play. Hopefully, Cindy, you won't be too long until you'll be receiving this and you too can be playing with this beautiful collection as well. Suzanne has said my wreath has just come. Fantastic. That's lovely. So every time we lay it, lay it down, I'm just always checking that everything's still sitting. I'm happy with how it looks. I'm happy with the overall design. Now, for our next layer, as we say, it's all about this storytelling. So we're going to have... Father Christmas in all his finery, just making an appearance to the side of the card. So it almost looks like he's just been, he's seen this Christmas tree, he's dropped off his presents and he's off to the next house with more parcels in his little sack there. So it's just that, that wonderful sense of storytelling. And of course you can see the golds, pick up the golds in his little bag there, the reds and the blush and everything like that all work so spectacularly together. But what I do want to do is bring a little bit of height to this card as well. So we're gonna go in with the bow. So this bow, all I've done is I've printed out the vignette for the wreath card shape and cut out following the cut line details of the bow. So that's gonna stick at the front and that's gonna create a really lovely sort of dramatic look, almost like I have literally tied a bow to the front of this card. Same with Father Christmas, he's gonna be given a little bit of height and dimension too. So if you're wondering how we get this artwork, this coloured artwork that we are working with for these designs and these um, cards, they're all available from carnationcrafts.co.uk. There are free downloads for all the collections and the, the cards that I'm demonstrating today are using the free downloads, the free colourways. There are additional colourways as well, but if you have purchased the full Glow of Christmas die collection from Create and Craft, you will find within your parcel a little code and a leaflet explaining how to access those codes, okay? Those additional colorways too. Okay, so Father Christmas, I've just snipped away his little grounding device. So his little patch of ground, I've just snipped through with, his, with some fine scissors and we're gonna round him off. Now you see, each time I'm turning these vignettes round, they are what we call mirrored vignettes, okay? What that means is you've got the same design on the reverse, of the die cut as what you do on the front. And it is super, super easy to use. You just print them off and fold down the black line to the center of the design. If you need a little bit of helping hand with that, we do have tutorials, video tutorials available on our Facebook page. Um, again, you can, you can just search for the links in those. We do the vignette tutorials quite often, but because we're doing two cards in this demonstration today, I'm not going to cut a vignette. I will show you in the next card how we, how it looks and everything. But yeah, there's videos already online for those. So you see what we're doing here is we're taking our ball tools and we're just going through following the cut line details that are in place and then rounding off the area. So I'm switching between a smaller ball tool and a larger ball tool 
just to give you more prominence on certain areas and rounding them through. It gives you a much more realistic look rather than having something that is flat stuck to your card. By giving this height, by giving this shape, by giving this dimension, you're really bringing your die cuts to life. If you haven't tried it, do, 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 please do consider trying it because it really will transform your crafting as well. Dawn has just said, uh, just checked again and found the code. Thanks. Dawn, you're more than welcome. I'm glad you managed to find your code for your additional colourway vignettes for the Glow of Christmas collection. So Father Christmas now goes in a little bit of Pinflare glue gel, just in those areas whereby I have raised little bits of him. And that glue gel is designed to give you lift and dimension, okay? It also gives us a little bit of wiggle room. So if we place him down and we need to change him at all, we can do so fairly easily. But it just maintains that curve. It maintains that design you've just laid down with those ball tools, okay? So it gives him much more of a rounded finish. Same with the bow. So again, popping our card to one side and bringing in this wonderful, thick, luscious, velvety bow. We're gonna go in with our largest ball tool first and we're gonna round off that center and we're gonna round off all of that wonderful, blousey, velvety blow. I mean, the, the color in this, the artistry in this, the vignette artwork is just sublime. I just am absolutely in love with the colors for this. It's so rich and vibrant. Even down to, you see all oh, where you've got the um, gold along the edge of the bow, the light is hitting it, it's actually glowing. It actually looks like foil. It's not, it's artwork. It's just absolutely fantastic artwork in there as well. You see me moving down in ball tool size, just to really hone in to those cut line details and really exaggerate the detailing within the bow there as well. And when I turn this over, you'll see you've got this beautiful sort of undulated effect. Again, we can even go even further by pulling up the edges of that bow and curving it over to make it look like a real fabric bow. Now, with carnation crafts, obviously we have mentioned these mirrored vignettes, these vignettes whereby you've got the same colour on the reverse, excuse me, as what you do on the front, and it means you can go to town, you can exaggerate your layers with your decoupage, because when you look from the side, there's going to be no white bits that are going to detract from the overall look of the card itself. So again, with my pin flow, I'm just going to give that nozzle a little clean, just get off any excess glue. I'm using baby wipe to do that. That's a little bit better. And then what I'm doing, as you can see, is filling those areas where we've popped a lot of height using our ball tool in with glue, because that way these areas are gonna stand even more proud. Now, of course, if you prefer using foam pads, you can absolutely do so. Just layer a couple of foam pads or thicker foam pads in those areas to build that height as well. Sorry, I get my head out of the way. <laughs> I get so into the demonstration, I forget I'm supposed to be filming. Okay, so there we go. Our bow sitting proud to the front of the card. Father Christmas just off to one side, just behind the bow again, telling that story, okay? I'm gonna open up the front of this card. And again, I'm just sort of looking at it face on just to check Father Christmas is all straight. My Christmas tree is straight. Everything looks perfect. And for the inside, being an easel, what we need to do is add a stopper. Before I do that, I'm gonna just check back through the um, comments, make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, Holly says, I wasn't going to buy, but I watched the show on Tuesday, I caved, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's always the way. When Carla gets hold of these and starts demonstrating with them, it is just fantastic. Um, Catherine says, do Carnation do another Christmas collection later in the year? We have our second Christmas collection, uh, Catherine, launching in uh, next week around the tree. So it's two, we normally do two Christmas uh, collections a year, but never say never. Um, obviously I'm, I'm off for a little while. Um, so I'm not sure what's coming later, later in the year. Um, but yeah, we, we do tend to do two Christmas collections. Um, Karen says that bow just looks real. I've just printed some of the vignettes and I can't believe the colours. I know, isn't it gorgeous? Uh, Christine says, is the vignette for this wreath on two pages as it looked a little strange when I downloaded it? Yes, Christine, I should have mentioned that. Thank you for reminding me. Obviously by the size of the <laughs> this wreath maker, sorry, wreath card shape, um, 
we have to split it over two, uh, two pages of A4 because there's not enough room on an A4 page for two to fold in half to create your mirrors. So if you print it off, you'll see a little line along the bottom this time of the A4 page. And this time what you need to do is just line up that line on the bottom. So you'd print two and one will say mirrored, one will be normal. You line up your line just as you would do as if it was all printed in an A4 sheet. It's just an extra long A4 sheet if you think of it that way. So to the inside, we need a stopper and a sentiment, something to keep the card shape open when we come to open it up. So a little catch, if you like, on the inside. So what I've decided to do, I've chosen the decoupage layers from The Joy of Giving, this little reset up here. But because they cut in, in decoupage, I can use just the presents and a little sentiment as well to work as our stopper. Now I'm gonna grab a little bit of foam for this one because I want to be able to stand it up for the demonstration. Uh, rather than just using my pin flare, because pin flare won't dry quick enough to hold it open. And the stoppers do just that, they just act as that little area to catch the front of your card and hold that open. I'll just remove the, the morph hair from that as well, sorry everyone. So just lifting that a little bit on foam tape, just trimming that down. I'm using one mil foam tape, it's just standard foam tape, nothing nothing fancy, nothing special there. And then we've got the warm wishes as well, which is our sentiment we're gonna be including. I'm just looking for my tweezers. So with the sentiments, uh, this one reads warm wishes, there's Christmas hugs and kisses and also Merry Christmas available with this particular collection in, in this wonderful sort of golden leaf font. Um, they all come with their mats and layers as well. But because we're going straight onto this blue background, I decided just to go with um, the plain sentiment, if you like, without the mats and layers. And I'm just dabbing in a little bit of my book blinding glue onto areas again. All these little areas are there for you to add in, like so. And I'm just gonna position my presence in first before sticking to work out where I want my sentiment to stick and I think about there would be perfect. I'm going to stick it a little bit sort of on the slant there just to accentuate the wonderful curve that this particular sentiment has and I think having that wonderful sort of gold finished background really draws in the colour from the perfect papers and just highlights so beautifully against that backing paper as well. So for my presents, my little stopper, I've already decoupaged these up and as mentioned they are sitting on my foam tape that I've just trimmed down. And the presents are gonna sit just off to one side, nestled against the sentiment like so, to act as our stopper for when the card is open. And that is how we create a little card, well I say a little, it's actually quite a nice big size card, with the wreath card shape from Glow at Christmas. And let me just go back to that camera and hold this up for you so you can see in all its glory. We've got Father Christmas and that red bow from the wreath card shape, the presents in the background, and of course that stopper to the base as well to create a really pretty card design. Now remember, obviously I've created a card for this demonstration, nice lovely large size card. Of course, this is designed to work as a wreath in its own right as well. So if you do want to use that little hanger that we showed you at the start, you can tuck that into the mats and layers at the top. You can cut away the inside of the aperture as well to give you a true wreath-like finish. And there would be your wreath card shape. Okay, hopefully that made sense. If you do have any questions, do type them up because I'm still here. We've got another card to go yet. As I say, we're doing a special double bill especially for festive season on today's Facebook Live. But hopefully that has shown you a nice way of using the wreath card shape and the glow of Christmas. Okay, I'm going to pop that to one side and I'm just going to grab my bits and bobs for the next demonstration. Let's just have a quick check. Oh, Wendy said, what size, um, what size are the sentiments, please? I can measure that one because I've got it in front of me. Just looking for my ruler. <laughs> uh, the Warm Wishes is around about just under four inches across, maybe maybe three and three quarters actually. And then at its widest point, you're looking about one and a half inches. Obviously, Merry Christmas is gonna be slightly larger and longer because it's a, a large word and same with Christmas hugs and kisses too. 
Uh, if you are wondering the uh, dimensions for all the dies and everything, what die cuts they make should be available on Crate and Craft as well. Uh, Lorraine says, I can see this card will come out every year as decoration. It's stunning. Yeah, thank you, Lorraine. And that's, that's what I mean about the Glow of Christmas collection. It is stunning. It makes Christmas decorations, it makes those cards that you're going to keep and bring out every year as well. Uh, Diane says, the bow on the roof is phenomenal. I know, it's just, it looks real, doesn't it? It actually looks real. It's so, so pretty. Um, da -da -da. Oh, yeah, a couple of people say, well, thank goodness, I thought it was just me. I think that's in reference to the vignette. Yeah, sorry, I should have said that when we were going through. Um, uh, Lisa says, the wreath card is uh, just spectacular. Any advice on what's best packaging method to post this says card in order to protect the decoupage? Do you know what, um, Lisa, as we often say with these sort of things, is if you are going all mal and making sort of spectacular cards with lots and lots of decoupage layers, wrap them in a little bit of tissue, uh, bubble wrap, for example, or, or eco-friendly um, versions of that, and then consider a little gift box and something nice and strong to send it through the post with, or gift in person if you can do as well. Okay, so next card show, because I did promise a double bill. Excuse me whilst I just have a, a drink, because I say it's very hot in here. I just need a little refresh. So the next card shape we're going to be making this time around, let me just grab my demo. So we've got everything to go, everything ready. And we're going to have to play with the wreath maker. So this is, again, just another knockout sensation from Carnation Crafts, uh, head of design, Nick. Absolutely spectacular idea behind this whole piece if you like so i'm just getting my bits and bobs out already that's quite a lot <laughs> we're not going to construct a whole wreath because we will be here all day long having a lot of fun with our christmas collection but i was really keen to bring you both the wreath card shape the glow of christmas and then of course the wreath maker as well because it's something to refer back to and we're trying to pack in as many um facebook live demonstrations as a library, if you like, as a resource centre uh, for you guys to refer back to, um, just keep you covered whilst I go off on my, uh, my jollies for a little while. But I will be back, <laughs> fear not, I will be back with more demonstrations afterwards. Okay, so I'm just lining up my uh, die cuts and everything in front of me so I can start demonstrating with this. Okay, wreath maker. Let me just grab the bits and bobs and let me just grab those. Sorry, it's always difficult when you plan on doing two on the mounts because obviously you just set up for one and then you've got to go sort of fiddle around for bits and bobs for the second one. So do bear with me, um, but it won't be long. I've got everything here to hand. So hopefully it should be a fairly smooth transition between the two. Okay, so Christmas wreath maker. This is this die set here which features your wreath as the name would suggest just to the center here okay and then all the way around you've got all of these absolutely stunning tuck-ins all dedicated to that christmas sort of winter theme this would be great for winter birthdays winter anniversaries as well even sort of the nod to more religious connotations with the candles there again we've got lovely big bows in this bells and of course all your winter fauna and flora like your mistletoe, your pine cones, your ferns, your poinsettia, berries, holly, everything you would associate with Christmas. Now if you are familiar with carnation crafts you'll know these little sort of maker sets if you like um arrangement sets we've done previously we have done in the just to say collection the bouquet maker and also in the Fresh Blooms collection, the Arrangement Maker. And it's a similar sort of thing whereby you get lots and lots of tuck-ins of different flowers. So if you are the proud owner of those sets, you could work those in alongside your wreath maker and actually make summer or autumn or spring-like bouquet wreaths rather than just Christmas ones as well, using the same idea, okay? So let me turn this camera around like so. This is a die set we're going to be working with. You can see I've got all sorts, all sorts laid out over my desk here. Um, let's just have a look. A la la la. Lorraine says, can't wait for Sunday for my die dies to arrive. I'm work till then, sneakily watching this at work. I've done it again, Lorraine. I think you messaged last time and said I shouldn't really read your name out so loudly. <laughs> Christine says, my dice have just arrived. How fantastic. Um, Caroline says, I'm on a little break at the moment, can't wait to get home and open my day sets and have a play. And it says I'm doing that right, that one right now, which is fantastic. So 
wreath maker. How do we use it? So once we get the die open, you'll see it comes in two parts. You have this outer part, like so, which will cut just the outside of your wreath, which you can use with the artwork, with the colour vignettes. What you also have is then this inner bit, which is lots and lots of die cut slots, okay? To the top of the wreath, you've got this little join that not only joins the aperture to the outside, so you get perfect cutting each and every time, it means you can line up your slots if you wish to cut the slots perfectly each and every time as well, okay? When we cut, I'm gonna show it you in white because I think it's a little bit easier to see all the slots on there, okay? So when we cut, it gives you lots and lots and lots of slots, which will be your tuck-ins. And what you can do with your pokey tool is just open up your slot and begin tucking in your die cuts, okay? When you're working with the artwork, this is just a quick look at a mirrored vignette. You have, again, with the wreath maker, same with all of our die selection, our mirrored vignettes have the design on one side and the other, and then the black line down the center. What you do is you snip top and bottom and fold along that black line exactly. It's not necessarily down the center of the card or the paper, it's down that black line, okay? So folding that exactly, that means when you come to cut, the back and the front of your die cut is gonna be beautifully colored. Now, as I say, we have got videos showing you how to use that um, vignette process as well. When you cut from your vignette, you will end up with something that looks like this. So the lovely thing about the wreath maker is it almost camouflages those little slots, which is why I showed them to you on the white. And it also means there isn't the exact need to line up this specifically. There's enough texture in the background here that it just looks like your ferns all on the base of your wreath maker. To begin building, we can go in with our pokey tool, open one of the slots, grab one of our die cut tuck-ins and tuck that in, okay? We can then position. So it's up to you at this stage how you do it. I like to build first and then glue afterwards rather than trying to go in sort of all guns blazing and trying to glue and go because it might be that you, you slot something in and actually you want to change it up. You want it in a different direction. You want a different piece in there. It is just a case of moving around the frame, opening them up with your pokey tool, grabbing a die cut and slotting it in, okay? At this stage, before you stick anything down, you've still got time to maneuver, you've got time to layer, you've got time to adjust. Each time I can go in and slot. I'm not necessarily slotting one after another after another. I might skip a couple of slots. It's up to you. That's the fantastic thing about these. So go in with another one. This time the branches gives you this wonderful sort of wintry look like so. And you'll notice I've already pre um, ball toured these. So I've already uh, textured all of these to give them height and dimension as well. Again, keep going in, adding in, let's go for another piece of holly and slot that in and take your time over this. Now, you also me demonstrating, I'm using obviously the vignettes, the coloured artwork, which is the free download from carnationcrafts.co.uk. So yes, the wreath maker does come with a whole host of free downloads as well. So the original colourway is free, the berries, the different colours, you know, you've got the gold berries in there, the red berries in there, the mistletoe in there. Those are all free. The original colourways are all free. So you can start layering those up. What also looks spectacular is cutting this in different colours. So perhaps you want to cut these from whites, perhaps you want to cut these in pearlescence, perhaps you want to cut these in mirrors. Whenever we do card demonstrations, what we often say is less is more. But when it comes to the wreath maker, actually more is more because it looks beautiful as you start to build all of your layers into it. So giving this wonderful, true, fluffy look and finish to your design, okay? Remember, as I've said, it's up to you. You can stick as you go. Uh, having the ability to change the direction of things to overlap, to overlay, gives you more choice of when you come to work everything through. So you just continue that process, adding in your tuck-ins all the way around until 
you come to something that looks a little like this, okay? Doesn't it look spectacular? Doesn't it look like a proper wreath? So here I've included, I've tried to go with like a colour theme for this one. So it's reds and golds and whites. So I've included the ferns, I've included the hollies, the berries, the mistletoe, the little branches there, pine cones, of course, and then the little gold berries as well. And rather than trying to be too specific on a repeating pattern, because I don't think that always works with a wreath, I've spaced them but I've kind of just layered them as well. So every so often I've popped a little gold berry in, every so often I've popped my pink pine cones in and I've layered and layered and layered to give them a full look. To the back, what I've done, if I just flip that over, I've trimmed down any of the tuck-in tails that were hanging over the edge of the aperture and just snipped those away to neaten it up. And then I've just stuck them in place, sort of held them in place with a little bit of red liner tape just to secure them. Once I'm happy with placement and how they're sitting, it still means I can go in and move them around should I wish to, but it just gives them a little bit of an anchor point as well. Then you'll see I've added in some foam tape just to raise that up. If you were creating this as a uh, wreath in its own right to use and to hang, what I'd do before I put my foam tape on, or you know, or afterwards, Remember, we're working with mirrored vignettes, so we can pop that other piece of wreath onto the back to cover up all that working. So when it's hanging, you're not gonna see any of the way this is put together, okay? I'm also gonna add this to the front of the card, just again for demonstration purposes, it allows me to get more information in. So I've cut, ta-da, a small size card actually on this one. And again, I'm working with the Perfect Papers from the Glow of Christmas collection. The card base itself is six by eight inches on that. And of course the mats and layers are then corresponding sizes. And these I'm gonna stick down using finger lift tape. I've also got this white section, which is gonna be my base where I'm gonna hide my battery pack. We're gonna introduce our tiny lights to this demonstration as well. I know a lot of people were asking how we use those and I thought what better opportunity than to include them with our wreath as well. So once again, folding over those little tabs for our finger lift tape, just getting that into position. Just a little framing device. I didn't wanna to go too mad with backgrounds and, and detailing on this because I think really all of the attention should be on the wreath for this card because it's just so, so pretty. So that gives us our card base to start working on. Um, Cindy says, I've brought the bouquet maker too. They will work with this for other occasions. Yeah, absolutely, Cindy. It, it really is so, so pretty. Yes, the artwork for the wreath itself is in this deeper green, but as you've seen, cut it from white, cut it from different coloured cardstock, cut it from pattern cardstock. You've then got the base into which you can slot your arrangement maker and your bouquet maker flowers in as well to give you different wreath designs. So my wreath design is gonna to sit to the front of my card. I'm quite happy with it spilling over the edge of the mats and layers. I think it just gives it a much more realistic look. But what I wanted to do was include some of our tiny lights within the design as well. Okay, so these are a new launch from Carnation Crafts. They're available on the website already. And what they are, are I mean, like a, it's a string, basically, of little LED lights that we can include in our card designs. So I'm gonna grab, let's grab to get them all out. I'm gonna grab just one of them and show you how we put these together. So they come on these little cardboard slots. I'm gonna grab the smaller one. And yes, each and every single one do have their batteries as well. So we're just gonna remove the battery pack and unwind the lights. So what you have on these is a string of eight LEDs, two of, two of those, two strings of eight LEDs, so a shorter LED string. And then we have two strings featuring 16 LEDs. So if you're doing a bigger card or you want more lights in it, there's the option there as well. In to your battery pack, nice slimline battery pack, you just pop your nail in or your pokey tool and just, oh, come open. <laughs> All the other ones that I've done have come open really, really easily. Let's try that with the pokey tool, like so, okay? You also, as I said, get your batteries. So it takes two batteries and within the pack is enough batteries for each one 
of your designs. And you'll notice oops, whilst I'm dropping the batteries, is I'm being careful to try not touch the back of the batteries. It's a it's an old habit uh, passed over from a previous life as a jeweler. Um, we try not to touch the back of the batteries because it just lengthens the use of them. One goes in positive, one goes in negative. Let's just hold and then we click the on switch to check. Okay. If you click the on switch and they don't work, you just need to swap the batteries around. Okay. So flip them over and then try them again. You can then click that down and it encases your batteries in your little battery pack. And it's a nice slimline battery pack. It's only about five mil, which is perfect because we can hide this in our card designs. And of course, then we can stick it to our card designs too. So if I just turn that on again, just with that nice little slipping uh, switch, you've got a string of fairy lights to decorate your cards with, okay? So I'm gonna turn that one off because I've got one ready to go already on my card. And this is what we've done to hide the battery pack, okay? So I've cut another layer of the foam, um, sorry, of the cardstock like so. And this time we've got, just move that out of the way. We've got the battery pack with a little bit of red liner tape on the reverse. That is going to stick to the edge of the card and we're just going to bump that up to the edge so it's hidden still but so you can access that little switch and we're going to stick that down in place okay so if I just turn that on you'll see my lights are working everything's there everything's working it just means that's hidden around my card I've then got my foam in which to raise up this level so making room for my battery pack and to the front, all I've done with the hole punch is just punched a hole to the cardstock and then just um, taken the string of lights through that hole, okay? So that's just a standard hole punch, you know, a, a paper and office hole punch if you like. Once we've done that, we can then introduce our wreath and begin wrapping our lights around, okay? I'm gonna stick my card in place first just so it's not sort of rocking about everywhere when I'm trying to attach the lights to the wreath. It's a little bit more of an engineering project when you're introducing things like light packs and things like that but actually it's, once you sort of break it down and look at it it's a fairly simple way of adding really quite dramatic looks to the fronts of your cards. So I'm just removing the carrier sheet from my foam pads um, I was trying to find five mil foam pads. I couldn't find them at the last minute. So I've gone extra deep on these, which means there's enough sort of casing, if you like, to, to hide the battery pack behind the cardstock. And we're just gonna smooth that down like so. And then if we just keep checking, once again, there's enough room to get my finger in there to turn on and off my lights as well. Once we're happy with position, we can reintroduce our wreath. And again, there's several ways of doing this. It might be that you want to go in and sort of go in like so and just start sticking the lights around. As long as you've got enough maneuver between the layers, then you can do so. So if you hold that in place and check, I've got enough space, then flip that back over. And I am gonna stick this actually. I wasn't going to, but I think I will just for ease. Let me find some red liner tape. Does anyone else have a cat that likes to steal red liner tape? The Morphe cat is just obsessed with red liner tape and I don't know what it is. So I'm often hunting around for quite a while for my red liner tape. So we're just lining that up and I'm gonna stick that wire down into place and trim off any excess. Again, I'm using red liner tape just because I want something that's nice and secure. So a nice sticky, sticky tape on there. And it just means when I start wrapping, it just it just holds everything in place. It's also a great way of just disguising the layers as well, okay? So just trimming down, excuse the uh, Morphe fur. He has, I found this one in his bed, I think. He does steal them and then puts all of my uh, red liner sticky tape in his bed, which is slightly annoying, but slightly adorable as well. <laughs> 
for just going all the way around. I've left spaces in between the foam so I can stick my lights in place. And we're just sticking, I'm just sticking the wire, not sticking over the lights themselves. But you see, they're nice and flexible, they're nice and bendy. They are easily coiled around my design, like so. So again, just anchoring the lights in place. Now I know it seems a bit counterproductive showing you step by step by step, but you know, a lot of people do find it intimidating when it comes to different things on cards. So it's a nice way, given that we've got an extra long demonstration, just to go through and spend the time showing you how we put these together to so hopefully give you guys the confidence to go ahead and include these kind of things on your designs as well. Now each wrap that I'm doing, I'm just making sure I'm keeping the wire out of the way of the foam because the foam is what we're going to use to attach that wreath to our card front in just a moment. And just finishing the last of that stick all the way around to that last LED light on our string there as well. Now this is just the way I, I add my lights into my, my strings. There might be different ways. I'm sure there's plenty of different ways you guys might use at home. But for me, that's just the way I add mine. And you see then I'm turning that over because you've got a nice amount of bend and flex in that wire. It's really easy to maneuver that wreath then into place. I'm going to remove the carrier sheet from my foam, just like so, which will allow me to stick my wreath to the front of the card as well. And then you'll see how we begin building this card design. So just manoeuvring it. I've left a space at the top here, so that's the top of my wreath. And then just sticking all the way around. I spent one of the holly leaves, but that doesn't matter too much. It just adds to the texture. I might have shifted that over a little bit, like so. So that gives you your basis to your wreath design. But we're not finished. We're going to add one more little piece of detailing in before we finish, just to show you, again, how we sculpt and mould our die cuts. So this bow, again, part of that wreath maker design just rounding off the bow itself and the tails, moving down in size of the ball tools just to add definition as well. And let's get that in just a little bit through the centre of the smallest one as well. I'm going to turn that over and just pull those two sides of our bow over like so, just to really, again, like you saw me do with the wreath card shape. And in fact, let's go to town. Let's add in even more dimension to our tails just by twisting and turning them over the edge of a pokey tool. Remember, we're working with mirrored vignettes, so they got all that colour on the reverse as well. So really, it doesn't matter how much you lift these up, you're still going to see all that beautiful coloured detail on the back and no white bits going to be detracting from that. In with the pin flare glue gel again just to the top of that bow to finish nestling that into the top of our wreath to finish letting those tails hang down and if we just turn on our lights like so you get a little bit of a glow from that card as well isn't that fabulous now my lights are all the way on the other side of the studio so <laughs> I can't do the dramatic lights down and show you but if I just turn the camera around and show you from the front there we have beautiful, beautiful wreath card design with those tiny lights lighting up the back of our wreath. Something very, very special for your Christmas cards. But remember, if you want to incorporate the tuck-ins from the other collections, uh, the arrangement maker and the bouquet maker, they are going to look fabulous as well for any time of year. Um, Cindy says, I love the lights. I will have to figure out a way of being able to get to the batteries to change them if needed. Yeah, that's a really good point. But you know what? If you did need to change them, why not just make the card again? You've got the details there. You've got 
um, all of the die cuts to come back to and actually the fun of making it is going to be different every time as well. Um, once you, you know, get some more batteries, those little uh, LED packs can be reused anyway, so you're not losing out on anything, just a little bit of extra time to make another card if you wished. Um, if you were making this as a hanging wreath and putting your lights in, obviously you can pop your uh, battery pack so it's accessible to change those batteries if you're making this as a decoration as well. Um, Suzanne says, uh, beautiful Hannah, thank you, thank you Suzanne, that's lovely, Humberta's here, she says, so beautiful Hannah, sorry I was late, no trouble at all Humberta, you're always more than welcome at any time, as I say, we will upload these videos afterwards for you to watch back at any time. Lots of love coming in for those cards, let me grab my other one that we made today, double bill, so we made two, first one being the easel card, with the wreath card shape and glow of Christmas, and then the second one being, let me just move that because that's all my bits and bobs, <laughs> the wreath maker with the tiny lights as well. I hope you guys have enjoyed that and you're going to find ways of using your beautiful die cuts. Please, please, please add your designs, add your makes to the Facebook group because I love seeing them. Carla and I really do enjoy seeing them. Um, where was it? Jacqueline's just said a really, really good point here. Use Velcro to attach the lights so you can change batteries. That is perfect. Isn't that a grand, grand idea? Yeah, there's lots and lots of ways. And let's say one of those things about being uh, crafters is everyone is so willing to share their hints and tips as well, which is just perfect. So all that's left to say is, let's have a look. Where is it? Where is it, Hannah? Here. Oh, I dropped half the things on the floor. Please excuse me. Um, second launch for Christmas around the tree launches on Monday with Carla at 8.15 on Create Craft. Um, but for anyone interested, we do have a Facebook giveaway as well. So you can win the full collection of Around the Tree, including the additional die sets. And here's a quick sneak peek. We have got Splendid Spruce. This is just amazing. Wait till you see Carla using this. You're going to love it. We have got Christmas Friends, and they are so cute. They are so lovely. We've got Lovely Surprise. We have got Travel Snacks, which is just hilarious for our little reindeer and things in there. Uh, bringing in the season and seasonal sprays. So if you want a chance of winning that full set that I've just shown you, all those dyes I've just shown you, head over to our brand page, uh, which you're on at the moment if you're watching this video, uh, Carnation Crafts, and look for the giveaway post. You have to like, share and comment on that post by Saturday evening at 1 minute to midnight UK time and uh, we will then draw one winner, one lucky winner at random and announce them on Sunday. So you do have a chance of winning that full collection plus the additional colour, um, sorry, additional die sets as well. Uh, lots of thank yous coming in. Thank you everyone so much for joining me this afternoon. Uh, lots of people saying they can't wait to play. I look forward to seeing your designs in group. Um, I will be around for a little while afterwards to answer any questions if you do have any burning questions after the live. And until then, I will see you guys, hopefully, on Sunday at 2 with the show preview for Around the Tree as well. Until then, stay safe and I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Bye-bye.